Hi there, good morning, good morning, good morning to our viewers from the different parts of the world. I have been seeing familiar names from various schools joining us today. We have viewers from the 118 schools under the umbrella of MAPSA. We have the Apostolic Vicariate of Taytay, Palawan, Diocese of Cubao Educational System, Diocese of Lawag Catholic Educational System, Diocese of Paranaque Parochial Schools Association, Caloocan Diocese Schools Association, Malolos Diocesan Catholic School, Mapsa Antipolo, Military Ordinariate of the Philippines, Pasig Diocesan Schools, Roman Catholic Archbishop of Manila Educational System, and Roman Catholic Bishop of Nabaliches Educational System. And of course, we also have friends of MAPSA from the parishes where our respective schools are located, together with the students and parents as well. I am pretty sure that you are all excited for this webinar and you really saved this date and hopefully you have eaten a very good breakfast because this will be a very exciting day for all of us. But before we go any further, let us join, let us start this webinar with a prayer. And to lead us, let us welcome the principal of St. Francis Xavier Catholic School from the Roman Catholic Bishop of Navaliches Educational System, Ms. Josephine L. Malikdin. Let us put ourselves in the holy presence of our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, our Father, look kindly on us in distress. May we come nearer to your presence to seek true refuge in this time of pandemic. May we continue to trust, to hope, and to love giving each other comfort and encouragement. May generous people come to the aid of those who are most in need, those who lost loved ones, work, and livelihood. Let your spirit strengthen us to face all the hardships and difficulties of the present and of the days ahead. We remember the counsel of Jesus, your son. Let not your hearts be troubled. Have faith in God and faith in me. Help us to turn to you always, for you know all our needs, and you always provide for us. Almighty God, our protector, let us trust in you to carry us through this time of uncertainty. Jesus, hear our cries as we mourn those who have left us. Whatever tomorrow may bring, we will praise your name. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Saint Joseph, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you so much, Miss Josephine. The prayer will guide us all as we go along the webinar and will help us discern well with our decisions. But of course, this webinar will not be made possible without, without the love and concern of the man behind this event, a man full of wisdom and whose, whose intention is for the common good of all the employees of MAPSA and other people as well. He is the superintendent of Roman Catholic Bishop of Novaliches Educational System, the chairman of the Board of Trustees and President of Manila Ecclesiastical Province Schools Association. My dear friends, let us have our virtual clap for Reverend Father Albert N. Delbo, PhD, for his welcome remarks. Thank you, Ma'am Susan. The officers and members of the MAPSA 
Executive Council, join me in welcoming all of you and in personally thanking in advance our most eloquent and uh, dedicated resource person, Father Nicanor Ostriaco, OP, PhD, STSD. Today, government is uh, as ordered and purchased 3 million doses of COVID-19 vaccines produced by Sinovac and AstraZeneca. 1.14 million of these have been given to our country's health workers. Our government is targeting 70 million to achieve herd immunity against COVID-19. This morning, dear friends, Father Nick will guide us, enlighten us, inspire us, allay our fears and anxiety, calm all of us down, down with regard to the danger of COVID and our doubt with regard to vaccines and vaccination. And he will do it with distinct authority and eloquence. And not only that, Father Nick being a priest, a Dominican priest, can provide us not just the perspective of science and medicine and technology, but also the perspective of faith and morals. So, maraming salamat sa inyong attendance, participation. May the Lord bless all of us. May the Lord keep us safe and secure, sustain our good health this year and many, many years to come. Thank you. Good morning. Welcome to this webinar. Thank you so much, Father Albert, for that very inspiring message for all of us. That is a really a very good welcome for all of us to lessen the anxiety that we are feeling, the doubts and the fear. This webinar is really very helpful as we all fight against the pandemic. So now, we are blessed to have a 24-7 man, always on the go, the very reliable and compassionate school director of Cluster 5 and 6 schools, chair of Commission on Curriculum and Instruction of MAPSA and ARCOM ES, regional trustee of CEAP NCR. Ladies and gentlemen, virtual clap for Reverend Father Nolan A. K., who will do the honor to introduce the resource speaker for this morning webinar. Virt virtual clap, everybody. Speaker today will be my future employer at Providence College. <laughs> He's a household name in our country. He has a solid and excellent educational background, as well as professional accomplishment, both as a professor of theology and biology at Providence College. <laughs> My attention was caught when he gave a talk to our bishops. That eventually led to the revision of the Oracio Imperata. That includes, we thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Fellow Catholic educators, the pride of order of preachers, the pride of UST, the pride of our country, but most of all, a providence that God sent to us, my friend and my future employer, <laughs> Father Nicanor <laughs> Austriatico, <laughs> OP. Good morning, Father. <laughs> So good morning, uh, good evening actually from the United States. And thank you so much, Father. Uh, we will talk in the future if the, if the Lord provides an opportunity for you to serve here at our Catholic University in the United States. Um, so thank you so much for your kind invitation to present uh, to MAPSA this morning in the Philippines. Uh, my goal this morning for the webinar is to really provide a context 
for the vaccine concerns that Filipinos have, as well as to try to address the primary questions that are raised by these vaccines. So my webinar this morning is going to be divided into three parts. I will begin by talking about vaccine hesitancy in the Philippines. What are Filipinos concerned about? Why are they scared? Second, we will talk about increasing vaccine confidence in the Philippines. This is primarily the work of the USD COVAX awareness team that um, I established at USD at the beginning of this year. And then the majority of my webinar this morning is going to be uh, an, a short education to help you, if you are vaccine hesitant, to understand the vaccines, what are they for, how will they work, what are the strengths and weaknesses of the vaccines, and the kind of side effects that we can expect when we are vaccinated. So I'd like to begin by just talking about vaccine hesitancy. And so in January, at the end of January, my research students at the University of Santo Tomas and I deployed an open access online social media based survey throughout the Philippines. And we received from all the regions of our country, 15,651 responses. So it's quite substantial. We were able to get a, a significant snapshot of the Filipinos concerned with, uh, with vaccines. On the right of this slide, you see that 56% of them responded that they would be willing to receive the vaccine. Now, it turns out that our survey, this, this number of 56% is actually higher than the numbers that you see with other surveys. And one of the possible reasons for this is that our survey was limited to people, to Filipinos who use social media. So there were particular segments of the population, especially those who are poor, who we would not, we were not able to interrogate and ask. Now, we also were able to identify the root causes of, these, of this vaccine hesitancy. So first, unlike in the United States, so here in the United States, many Americans are ideologically opposed to vaccines in general. They do not believe that vaccines work or they believe that the risks of vaccines are too great with regards to their benefits. However, we do not see this in the Philippines. So when we asked our 15,000 respondents if they believe that vaccines work, 80% of them plus believed that vaccination would actually help them deal with COVID-19. So Filipinos actually believe that vaccines work. However, they have very specific concerns about these vaccines. So they are worried about fake vaccines, side effects, safety, efficacy, and they're concerned that the vaccines were not tested properly. So what I would like to do towards the towards the middle to the end of my webinar is to address each one of these in some way. We also were able to ask our respondents whether or not they had a preference for a vaccine brand. Now, half of our respondents said that they'd be willing to receive any vaccine as long as the vaccine was safe and efficacious, but significant numbers of our respondents, 46%, would prefer an American or European vaccine. One of the things that I hope that you will understand is that there is a severe shortage of vaccines in the world, particularly vaccines in, from the United States and from Europe, which is why we have to rely for our vaccine portfolio in the Philippines from vaccines made in many other countries. We also asked about uh, their worries. And what is striking in contrast to Americans is that Filipinos are more worried about their families getting COVID than they themselves getting COVID, which is not surprising given our incredibly family-centered uh, culture, um, which is one of the beautiful things I love about the Filipino people. We also wanted to, uh, to understand the influencers for their decision to take a vaccine. So not surprisingly, Filipinos 
uh, are hesitant to receive the vaccine first. They would like to have other people, other Filipinos receive the vaccine. And they also want, 71% would also want their politicians to receive the vaccine first before they receive it. So given these results of vaccine hesitancy in the country, we want to, to ask this question, how then can we respond to this hesitancy in order to build vaccine confidence? And so the vaccine awareness program that we are undertaking at USD has three goals. One, we want to provide the Filipino people with truthful information that will lessen their specific concerns. I will share that information with you later. We would like to emphasize the need to vaccinate to protect your families, not just yourselves, but your families. And we wanted to provide the Filipino people with personal testimonies of their kababayans receiving the vaccine because Filipinos want to see other Filipinos receive the vaccine before they do. So this is the USD COVAX response. Uh, this is a group of 30 undergraduates at the University of Santo Tomas. And I am the lead investigator of this team. And this is actually one of the logos of our team. It is a Philippine weaver ant, red weaver ant. It's very, very painful. But we wanted to tell our fellow, fellow, fellow Kababayans, look, it's the injection is like the bite of an ant, you know, and this is the stories that our lolos and lolas and our parents want to tell us. And we want to reinforce that over and over again. So this is, we've never met, you know, I've never met my students in person because of the pandemic, but we meet regularly on Zoom. Uh, we have students primarily from the Department of Biological Sciences, the third year industrial biology and third year medical biology. And we also have students from advertising arts in the College of Fine Arts and Design. Because as you see, our primary goal is we uh, create and disseminate science-based infographics uh, to address the concerns of the Filipino people. This is the vaccines to be used in the Philippines. It's a wonderful one image to tell you everything you need to know. We do it in English and in Filipino. So this is a, and I encourage you, and we also have COVAX-19 testimonies from Filipinos from all over the world who've been vaccinated. And we're now getting testimonies from Filipinos in the Philippines who've been vaccinated. And I'm one of the goals is I'm trying to get the bishops from the CBCP who've been vaccinated to contribute to our effort to educate and to inform our Filipino uh, compatriots. And I invite you to use our social media infographics to educate your students and your colleagues. We have a Facebook page on USD COVAX awareness team. And all of our infographics are made available for public distribution on this website. And we encourage everyone to simply flood social media with them so that uh, our fellow Filipinos will be able to understand and know what is happening. So the bulk of my webinar is going to be about vaccines and vaccinations. Uh, what are your questions? Here are some of the answers that we can provide. And I'm open, of course, to an extensive question and answer following this webinar, because I know that many people are going to have very specific questions about uh, these vaccines. So I'm going to begin with an overview of the COVID-19 vaccines. This was from a couple of days ago. This is from the coronavirus vaccine tracker of the New York Times here in the United States. So you can see that there are about 100 vaccines that are in the works. We have eight of them approved. Five of them have been approved for emergency use authorization only. And you see that not every single vaccine works because four of the vaccines have already been abandoned because they failed their vaccine trials. Now, uh, these are some of the famous ones that you probably have heard about. So there's Pfizer and Moderna. Uh, we will, those are made in the United States. We also have Gamelaya, which is made in Russia. AstraZeneca in the United Kingdom, and then from China, Sinopharm and Sinovac. And if you want to understand how these work, you have to understand that the vaccines deliver a cargo to your body. 
So we begin with what do they deliver? Um, oh, I'll back up a little bit. So you have to understand that antibodies destroy SARS-CoV-2. So SARS-CoV-2 is the virus against uh, that is the cause of COVID-19. And this red circle is an image of that virus. And the blue that you can see around that virus are your body's antibodies. And antibodies are like missiles. They are like cruise missiles that will target the SARS-CoV-2 virus and destroy them. And the vaccines help your body to make these antibodies. So this is a very famous picture. This is the picture, the, the picture of the first person to be vaccinated against COVID-19 outside a clinical trial. She was 91 years old at the end of December. And what is not known is that the nurse who vaccinated her is a Filipina who has been in the United, in the United Kingdom for 25 years working for the National Health Service. So um, the vaccines will deliver the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein. So this is a very famous picture of the SARS-CoV-2 virus. And you see the skin, the skin of the virus is covered with these red spikes. And the spike is the key that the virus uses to enter your cells. And so what these vaccines do is the vaccines take, for the most part, just these spike proteins and delivers the spike proteins to your body and to teach your body how to make these antibodies, these cruise control missiles that will destroy the SARS-CoV-2 virus. So there are different ways to deliver the spike protein to your body. So first of all, uh, the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines are called RNA vaccines. They deliver the information to make spike protein into your body. We also have viral vector. This is the two most famous ones right now. There are three actually, are AstraZeneca, Gamelaya from Russia, and Johnson & Johnson. You have heard about Johnson & Johnson. So they use um, a monkey virus, an inactivated monkey virus to carry the spike protein to your body. Then we have what is called the whole virus. This is the Chinese virus, uh, Chinese vaccines. So you have Sinovac and Sinopharm. What these vaccines do is they kill the virus and then they inject the dead virus into your body and your immune system, your body learns to recognize the dead virus and to make antibodies against them. Finally, there is one last platform that is commonly used. It's called a protein subunit. Um, there are no approved vaccines yet of this kind, but we expect the Novavax vaccine to be approved in the next few months. And the Philippines has ordered uh, several million of the Novavax vaccine. So these are the three vaccines that are most commonly used right now in the Philippines. So the first column is Sinovac. The third column is AstraZeneca. And Gamalaya is the Russian vaccine. We are expecting a delivery of Gamalaya in April, which is why I've listed all these three. Now, you will notice in all of these three, you have to take the two doses separated either by three weeks, four weeks, or more, depending upon the vaccine. And the efficacy of the vaccines will vary. So the Sinovac, um, there was a paper that was published today, we believe it from Peru, and it was uh, a population-based study from Peru. And we believe the efficacy in Peru is about 67%. Um, but this is 67% against the variants. And we will talk briefly about the variants. Gamalaya has 92% and the AstraZeneca, there is a 63 to 82%. Now, what is really important is this number here. So this number here, so there is data, this data is constantly changing, but we believe that um, all of these vaccines will provide 90% to 100% protection 
against severe COVID and hospitalization. What does this mean? It does not matter if you get COVID, if COVID does not put you in the hospital, if COVID does not kill you. What we would like to do is we would like to transform COVID from a deadly disease, which it is now, to an ordinary cold or an ordinary fever. So the idea is that any of these vaccines, even though the protection against getting COVID is not 100%, we believe that these vaccines will prevent you from getting very sick COVID. You might get COVID, you might be sick for one day, you might be sick for a few days, but you will not get so sick that you will go to the hospital. You will not get so sick that you will die. And that is important to keep in mind. Now, these numbers are varying right now because there are studies that are occurring all over the world. But for the most part, it's between 90 to 100 percent, all three of them protecting you against uh, severe COVID. Now, you have heard of these variants. They're the, these are the two common variants in the Philippines. The B117 variant is from the United Kingdom and the B1351 variant is from South Africa. We have a Pinoy variant called P3, but really we don't know anything about that variant because no one has really studied that variant. So I'm not going to discuss it. So what we have seen is that uh, these variants, um, uh, some, of, some of them affect the vaccine, some of them do not. So. The B117, it looks like all three of these common vaccines work. Now, there is a concern about the AstraZeneca vaccine with regards to the South African variant, which is probably why it will not be, we should expect to receive a third dose of all of these vaccines in the future, specifically tailored to the variants. Now, you will notice I include two little icons of a human fetus down here. And the reason why these two icons are here is because the Gamelaya and the AstraZeneca vaccines were actually manufactured with human cell lines that were originally obtained from the corpse, the, the, the remains of an aborted fetus 50 years ago. And um, many people here in the United States have asked me about that historic evil. And the church agrees that one, um, we should be able to receive these vaccines in good conscience because our receiving of these vaccines will not lead to future abortions. That would be the number one concern. If we receive these vaccines and it would lead to future abortions, we would not be able to receive them. But the reason why these cell lines are being used and have been used is because they are established, they are well studied, which is why we do not have to worry that our use of the vaccines today will lead to future um, abortions. How do we deal with evils that occurred in the past? Now, for example, my Lolo, when he passed away some year, before he passed away some years ago, because he experienced the atrocities of the Japanese invasion of the Philippines in the Cagayan Valley, he was someone throughout the rest of his life was not willing to take or to participate in any Japanese products because he knew that the great evil that he experienced during the Second World War was too great. I also know of an esteemed Jewish scholar here in the United States who has never visited Germany because he doesn't want to have anything to do with the German people's involvement during the Holocaust. Now they know that the German people today are not um, responsible for the Holocaust, but that still is a concern. So there are going to be different sensitivities. Some people are more sensitive, some people are less sensitive to historic evil. However, the church reassures us that in good conscience, especially given the uh, grave proportionate need of ending the pandemic, that we, we can be free to receive these vaccines. 
Now, uh, as of a few days ago, there have been 840 million doses that have been distributed uh, and vaccinated. So within a few months, uh, 1 billion people throughout the world will have been vaccinated against COVID-19. Now, what are the side effects? As you saw, a lot of people are, are worried about side effects. This is a picture of me being vaccinated with the second dose of Moderna. So we were back, my entire convent here in the United States uh, was vaccinated at the end of January. All, all of us, all 40 priests, all of our workers, all of our cooks, ev- all of our janitors, everyone was vaccinated to protect the Lolo priests. There were two doses of the Moderna vaccine as there are two doses for most vaccines. And these are some of the common side effects. Uh, Pain in the injection site, tiredness, headache, muscle pain, fever, joint pain, chills, nausea, and swelling. I can tell you that I had most of these, (laughs) number one. Secondly, you notice the red bar is bigger than the blue bar because the side effects are a lot worse after the second dose. I know in my case, I was so sick that I was having chills for four or five hours and it could not stop. Now the Lolo priest in my convent had no side effects. And it turns out that the older you are, the fewer the side effects. So the younger priests all got very sick. The Lolo priests had no side effects. So during morning prayer, there was a lot of questions. Why are only the Lolo priests in choir? Well, that's because all of the younger priests were in bed sick like dogs, uh, completely sick. So the reason I say this is that the side effects are a good sign that the vaccine is actually working. That's why it's harder the second time around because the second time around, your, your immune system is already learning how to fight the vaccine, to fight the virus. So when you get it the second time, it fights back like Mani Pacquiao and you are sick for an entire day. Now, we also know now that if you got COVID-19 before you get vaccinated, the first dose will be worse than the second dose because the first dose will be like a second dose for your body because your body experienced COVID-19 naturally. So, but it will pass after 24 to 48 hours. Now, there's been in the news in the last few days, there has been a question about blood clots with AstraZeneca. So let me just give you a comparison of the risk. It's extremely low. Uh, It appears that the AstraZeneca does give rise to blood clots, especially in young women who are on the birth control pill. So this is is a concern, but the risk of blood clots is one in 300,000. Now to give you a sense of the other risk, so the risk of you being hit by lightning is one in 15,000, and the risk of being in a car crash is one in 103. So you can see that the risk of of the blood clots is incredibly small, and it is therefore beneficial for you to receive the, the vaccine if it is offered to you. Now, just to make sure you know, if these are some of the symptoms, if you're having a blood clot, it takes about four days after the vaccine. If you're going to get a blood clot, it takes about four days afterwards. Um, if you have shortness of breath, chest pain, swelling in the leg, you have a pain in your stomach, you have neurological symptoms, headache, blurred vision. If any of these happen, you can go, please go to the emergency room right away and tell them that you had received the AstraZeneca vaccine. But the risk is incredibly small. There's also a risk of allergic reactions, but you notice this is 10 out of 4 million people in the United States. And um, I am aware that the Philippine vaccination program is ready for this which is why when you are vaccinated in the Philippines, you will be asked to wait for 15 to 30 minutes after the vaccination to see if you will get an allergic response. And if you do, they will have the necessary drugs called epinephrine to give to you to stop the reaction. And this is called an EpiPen. This is the pen, this is given to people who have severe allergic reactions. So this will, people will be ready for that 
to make sure that you do not have, that you do not get very sick if you have a reaction from one of the vaccines. So do the vaccines work? Now, this is the story of Israel, the Holy Land. So vaccines are ending the pandemic in Israel. This is the good news. So they started vaccination on December 20th. And you can see that this month they have vaccinated all of their senior citizens twice. And they're expecting to vaccinate their entire country by the end of April. And what they noticed is as soon as they vaccinated about a half of their people, the number of cases dropped, the number of hospitalizations dropped, the number of severe illness dropped. So the pandemic is ending in the Holy Land and uh, there are, they are already lifting the requirements for masks. They do not have to wear masks. They do not have to socially distance as much as we do uh, in the United States or in the Philippines because the, the pandemic is ending. So you can see this right here. So, so basically three weeks after the second dose of the vaccine, there were no more people who were getting sick from COVID. So the vaccines were protecting them against COVID-19. So how about in the Philippines? So this is the story of the COVID-19 vaccines in the Philippines. So first of all, you need to know there will be a significant vaccine shortage in the whole world because there are 7.8 billion people who live on our planet and we only can make right now 5.6, the, the enough doses to vaccinate 5.6 billion people. So 2.2 billion people today are not going to have enough vaccines. And the reason for this is because five different countries or groups of countries have bought most of the vaccines. So the United States, the European Union, United Kingdom, Canada, and Japan, they have bought most of the vaccines, leaving only a few of the Western vaccines available, only 800 million for the rest of the planets, which means that we have to rely on Chinese, Russian, and Indian vaccines. This is why we are going to get vaccines from all over the world. And of course, you've heard of them already. We've discussed them. This is the rollout of the vaccines. So as Father pointed out at the beginning in the introduction, we have now about two and a half million doses available. And as of a week or so ago, we have deployed about one and a half million. But you can see in the second, the third, and the fourth quarter, we expect to receive enough vaccines to try to vaccinate uh, 70 million Filipinos in the entire country. The highest, these are the highest vaccine priority categories. Uh, currently, we are vaccinating A1, A2, and A3. These are frontline workers, senior citizens, and persons with comorbidities. Uh, uh, um, I just learned from, from father that uh, some of the teachers are now going to be included in the A4 uh, vaccine priority category. And A5 is the indigent population, the poor of our country. Uh, they are put in the A5 category. So the, the goal here right now is that during the second quarter, we will be vaccinating A1, A2, and A3. A4 and A5 will begin at the, at the end of the second quarter and hopefully will proceed through the third quarter of 2021. And the rest of the country will be vaccinated, we hope, by the end of the year. And the goal, of course, is to have an as normal a PASCO as possible. Now, the question I usually get is, why should you get vaccinated, especially if you are young? Now, you should be vaccinated to protect yourself and to protect those around you, especially those who are old and vulnerable. We have to protect our lolos and lolas. And we will do this by not only vaccinating them because uh, we vaccinate them directly, but we also protect them because of herd immunity. So this is herd immunity. This shows you how herd immunity works. So in the upper left-hand corner, the red dots are people with COVID and the blue dots are the people who have not been vaccinated. And what you can see is that the red dots and the blue dots mix together. That's what's happening today. They're mixing together. They're either mixing in the mall, in the bus, 
everywhere in the NCR plus, they are mixing. Now look what happens at 70%. So at 70%, the red dots cannot find the blue dots because there are so many yellow dots around them. So the yellow dots are the vaccinated Filipinos. So you have a few COVID positive Filipinos, but they are surrounded by vaccinated people so that the red dots cannot find the blue dots. That's why the pandemic will end. This is why herd, this is how herd immunity works. This is why we must target 70 to 75. Uh, I'm thinking now 80 to 85 because of the, of the variants in our country, but we just have to vaccinate as many people as possible. So you can see there are enormous challenges. huh? The COVID-19 vaccination program is the largest and most complicated public health effort in the history of our beloved country. It is also the largest and most complicated public health effort in the history of the world. And it is especially important because it will benefit the poor and most vulnerable among us because their poverty makes them vulnerable to COVID-19. Their, their bodies are weaker because of, of, of hunger and they live in such uh, close quarters that if the, if the pandemic hits their informal settlement, hits their slum, then they're all vulnerable. So I said we have to vaccinate at least 75 million people. And because 35 million of Filipinos are children, and the vaccines are not yet approved for children, we have to target every single Filipino adult scattered over our 7,000 plus islands. And we have to vaccinate most of them twice. Now imagine how difficult this will be. You have to go to some islands, like say the island of Kamigin or Kam Kalayan, right off the province of Cagayan in the Babuyanes archipelago. Uh, I know because the Philippine Dominicans have a mission parish there. Uh, there is no constant electric supply. So you're going to have to bring the vaccine there. Then you have to wait one month to vaccinate the people of Kamigin again. So what are you going to do with the vaccines? Are you going to put them in the refrigerator? But there's no electricity. So you see, this is going to be an incredibly challenging log logistic um, enterprise. We have to tell Lolo and Lola, Lola, it's time for you to be vaccinated again. But she's like, I was vaccinated already. You're like, no, 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 no. You need two. And she, you, you will tell her the second one will be worse than the first. Wow, you have to, you see how difficult it will be to convince our Filipino kababayans to go and get vaccinated. And yet we must do this all together, not just for ourselves, but for all of us, especially for our entire country. And as I pointed out, we have sufficient vaccine hesitancy. So Filipinos are not sure if they will be vaccinated against COVID-19. So in conclusion, this is my last slide. It is a blessing from the Lord that we have safe and efficacious vaccines against COVID-19 so soon after the pandemic. And I urge all of us to be vaccinated, not only to protect ourselves, but also to protect our neighbors, especially those who are elderly and vulnerable. So thank you so much for your kind attention. Um, I'm ready for questions. Okay, so good morning, Father. I'm, I'm Susan, the moderator for this morning. I'm so pleased to see you virtually. I'm, so, I'm really so excited and looking forward uh, for this day that I will be the one to ask some questions, to deliver to you the questions of our uh, thousands of viewers. So Thank you so much. It, yes, Father. So indeed, it was a very clear presentation and... If I am one of the viewer, most probably I will go out and be vaccinated immediately. So, as if in this in this in your in your webinar, uh, Father, it is truly love, no? It is love that uh, that will conquer everything. If you love your neighbor, if you love your family, go out and get the first dose of vaccine. So, Father, we have a question here from Dr. Anthony Venus, uh, the chair of MAPSA Commission on Human Resource 
education. So the first, uh, actually, he has uh, four questions. The first question is, according to DOH and World Health Organization, vaccines are generally safe and yet some inoculated individuals showed reactions from common to serious adverse effects. What causes these events? Is it the autoimmune system of the person rejecting the foreign body or the other ingredients in the vaccine that carry the antigen? Now, as we heard, there are very, very clear cases. Very, very clear. Out of 7 million in Europe, a blood clotting concerns with AstraZeneca. Uh, we are still trying to understand what is happening in these people. Uh, you can see 60 out of 7 million. So you can imagine it will be, you know, in the entire NCR, it's 100 people. So 100 people in the entire NCR would have this reaction. Uh, we do not understand why it is happening, but what we can do is we know the, the kind of person who is at risk for this. And we can then tell that person, if in the after four days you feel any of these symptoms, please return to the hospital right away. So we do not understand these very rare reactions. We think it's something unique about the, the bodies of these people. But since there are so few of them and it's so recent, we haven't really studied them. So thank you again for your wonderful question. Thank you, Father Nick. So the most important thing of all, if you are feeling this uh, certain uh, adverse effect, it is really to go to the doctor and consult the doctor immediately. Thank you, Father. And his second question is, it is in the news that South Korea will resume the use of AstraZeneca to its populace, including 30 years old and over. What could be the possible explanation on determining the proper age suited for a particular vaccine? Would you recommend the Philippines replicate South Korea's decision after all, our private sector has pre-ordered 17 million vaccines from the company. So thank you again for that question. Um, age categorization is based upon the clinical trials that were undertaken with the vaccine. So the FDA of the Philippines, which has all the information from the clinical trials, they have to decide the age bracket that is appropriate for a particular vaccine. Um, the pause that occurred uh, in South, Af South, South Korea was because the FDA of South Korea had to re-examine the concerns raised by these blood clots. And as you can see, since most of these blood clots, apparently, uh, and I do not have the data, but apparently from news reports, the, date, the, the blood clots occurred in young women below the age of 30. This may be why AstraZeneca, South Korea has limited it to this age. But it is not me to say, it is the FDA of the Philippines that has all of the information. They will have to decide which age groups will be eligible for which vaccine. Thank you so much, Father. Now, Father, uh, yesterday I have uh, this faculty meeting. And then, you know, the, the faculty nowadays are composed of young, young blood, no? The, the young generation that we call. Now, they have this apprehension uh, in having this vaccine because for them, after three to five years, uh, it might affect their, uh, uh, there is a risk for their pregnancy. 
How true is that, Father? That is there. That we there is no scientific evidence at all for the claim that uh, the COVID nineteen vaccines affect pregnancy. In fact, the person who raised that was did not understand the biology. It is completely fake news. We have people now who got pregnant after being vaccinated. We have had babies in the United States who were born. Uh, immune against COVID-19 because their mothers were vaccinated while they were pregnant. So there is no scientific evidence whatsoever that this vaccine is going to affect pregnancy at all. Thank you so much for that clarification, Father, because a lot of young, uh, the younger generation, they are more hesitant to be vaccinated. So another question, Father, from our viewer. I had my first dose of Sinovac. I don't experience any side effects. Would that mean that Sinovac is not working well? By the okay, way, I am only 44 years old. So thank you. You are so young. <laughs> um, no, so uh, different bodies are different. So some bodies will, uh, will have stronger side effects than others. Uh, I had no side effects during after the first dose of Moderna. So most people will have the side effects after the second dose. So you are very young at 44. Uh, you may have effects after the second dose, but there are still people who will have no side effects at all and the vaccine is working. Thank you, Father. Now, another phone-in question, phone-in question, Father. How many times in a year do one get vaccinated? So that's a good question. Um, we still do not know how long the protection will last for a vaccine. We believe it will be at least one year. So we think what will happen in the next few years is that Every Filipino is going to have to be vaccinated against COVID-19 every year uh, as, uh, in order to keep the pandemic from exploding again. So right now we think every year, which is why, for example, if people are, you know, I have people who tell me, you know, Father, I'm going to wait for Pfizer. I'm going to wait for Moderna. And I tell them, look. Why didn't you take the Sinovac, the AstraZeneca this year? And the next year, you can take the Pfizer or Moderna. Because this year, there are no Pfizer. There will be no Moderna because the Western countries are using all of them. So it's like if you're walking along a road and someone says, Father, would you like my Toyota car? And you say, no, I don't want your car. I'm waiting for a BMW. But you are walking along the street. Any car is better than walking. So any protection is better than no protection. So if you are offered a vaccine, get vaccinated today. And then next year, when there is more supply, you can say, hmm, I think I'm going to upgrade the vaccine. Now, one of the things that you should know, actually, is that the Sinovac vaccine and the Chinese vaccines appear to, even though their protection is lower, their protection is broader. So it looks like the Chinese vaccines, which may not be as high efficacy, they can protect you against the variants better than Pfizer or Moderna or AstraZeneca. So you see that it's like buying a car. You have to decide which one you want, which is why, like I tell everyone, the best vaccine is the one that is being offered to you today. You get vaccinated right away because waiting may make you vulnerable to getting COVID. Wow, thank you, Father. So if I get uh, my Sinovac this year, I can get Astra next year. Thank you so much for that clarification, Father. You know what, Father? There are so many viewers who are really interested and in giving lots of questions. So I hope please stay with us. So from... Okay. Yes, Father. So from Chiner Guerrero, if you get other vaccines such as flu vaccine or pneumonia vaccine yearly, will it affect that? Or can COVID be taken yearly instead of getting an additional flu vaccine yearly? 
you know, flu and thank you for that question. So flu and COVID are different things. So, you know, there are people who get uh, vaccinated against pneumonia, they get vaccinated against flu. Well, now you're going to be vaccinated against COVID. And I was reading in the newspaper today, Moderna has announced they're going to try to have a combo vaccine. One vaccine against COVID and flu together. So you get a combo wow. shot, you know? So it's, uh, but again, these are all in the works. Uh, that's what will be, this will be a concern of next year and the year after that. For now, we need to get the vaccine that is given to you today so we can end the pandemic in the Philippines and we can celebrate Pasco. That's the key. <laughs> we want a beautiful, joyful Pasco where we can sing, we can embrace, we can have parties. This is the goal. And if we, if we do not vaccinate, we will not be able to have a glorious Pasco. Yes, Father. So we really have to be vaccinated. So the flu vaccine is uh, of different is different from that of the COVID vaccine. So another question, Father, from Arthur Lawrence Quemel II. What can you say about the medicine in Vermectin? Also, you have mentioned that you are planning or in the process of developing a vaccine for the Filipinos. What is the update regarding this? So thank you for those two questions. Um, there are many people who are selling their, their drug or their product to cure or to prevent COVID. And so it's important that we follow the science. And the science for ivermectin is still uncertain. What I mean by that is ivermectin is a poison. It can kill, it can make you very sick. The danger is that if you take ivermectin and you take too much ivermectin, you will get sicker than you, than you would have been had you had COVID. And we do not have enough data, scientific evidence, to show that ivermectin works, which is why the FDA, not just the FDA of the Philippines, but the FDA of the United States and many regulatory agencies throughout the world have said to caution people, do not use ivermectin, especially since in the Philippines, the ivermectin that is available is ivermectin that has been made for animals. Yeah. And when you take a medicine that is made for animals, that is not made for humans, there are other things in the medicine that would make us sick. You know, so, so I am uh, advising our viewers, um, we are scared. There are reasons to be scared. Um, but we cannot put ourselves and our families at unnecessary risk taking a drug that can be poisonous, that has no sure data to support its efficacy. For the second question, so thank you for the second. Yes, I'm actually, I was in the Philippines for most of last year. I returned here to the United States to work in my laboratory to develop um, a yeast delivery system for a vaccine for COVID-19 for the Filipino people. Uh, we are still testing the vaccine here in the US. I hope to have it done by in a few weeks. And then I will return to USD. We, we, we are setting up an animal laboratory at USD to test, to test the vaccine. There are so many steps of testing. And then we have to test it in Filipino volunteers uh, healthy people who want to see if there's an effect. And it will take at least a year before it will be developed. So if the Lord wants this vaccine, then it will work. I have already talked to Mama Mary and told her, I said, Mama, I was going to work as hard as I can and do the best science that I can, but you have to pray too, because it, it all depends if the father wants this vaccine. Um, and so we will, we will do this the goal of this vaccine is a second generation vaccine. Uh, the goal will be for every year after this year uh, to save our country money, we will have our, uh, a yeast delivery system to help us to maintain herd immunity after we have achieved herd immunity with all the vaccines that are being deployed now. Thank you so much, Father. As what Father Nolan said, you are the providence that God sent to us, and we will pray uh, for we that, Father. Pray. 
Yes, Father, because you know uh, our kababayan in the remote areas, I, I just don't know how can our government can reach them in order for them to be saved. So together with you, Father, we will pray for that. So for from Limuel June Letigio, do Philippines has the potential to manufacture vaccine? So um, my hope and prayer is that our country will in time become vaccine sufficient. Um, my attempt to make a vaccine um, is a first step in trying to get us there. But again, it is a, it, it, technologically, it is a challenge and our country still has a way to go to develop the technological infrastructure for a vaccine. However, you know, in, in the middle of the 20th century, we were making vaccines and we were sending these vaccines to China and we were sending this. So we have to recover what we had before. Father. So you know what, Father? How many more uh, minutes do you have with us? Because, you know, there are a lot of questions I have here. I can go. <laughs> I mean, I can go. I can go. You just read. You just... I, it's 10.30 at night here, so I have no more meetings and I have no more anything. So, And I took a nap before this to make sure that I would not fall asleep. So, And tomorrow is Saturday, so um, I can stay another maybe 45 minutes okay, if there are any you. questions. Thank you so much, Father. From Heather Charlize Ladaga, do you think you will get prioritized once you get side effects? Especially hospitals are now a bit crowded because of COVID-19 cases. Parent now is asking. <laughs> ah, so yes, unfortunately, the, NC the hospital system in the NCR is currently overwhelmed by the second surge in the capital. And my hope and prayer is our government can take, get this under control. I'm a little worried right now. Right now, it doesn't look like we know what we're doing at the moment, but hopefully we'll be, we'll be able to get control of this surge. Um, with regards to the question, uh, you know, it, I do not know. So I think the question is this. If I get the severe reaction against COVID-19 vaccine, will the emergency room accept me uh, from the beginning? I, I, I did not heard. All I've heard from the DOH is the DOH has kept track of severe cases. So I know that for some people, they have been able to go to the hospital and receive their care. So my, my sense is you go to or your barangay. So I think the best way is you approach your barangay BERT and the barangay BERT will inform the DOH that this is a vaccine related situation and you will be brought to the proper hospital. There is a, another, thank you for that, Father. There is another question here from a priest who wanted to be employed by you. No? Coming, from, <laughs> coming from Father Nolan, what is the advantage <laughs> of Sinovac? So uh, each, each of the vaccines have different advantages and disadvantages. So uh, the Sinovac, uh, vaccine has a lower efficacy, for example, than AstraZeneca, but it has a broader defense. It has broader protection. So it appears that the Chinese vaccines protect you against the South African variant in a way that the Western vaccines do not. And as you know, the South African variant B1351 is now spreading in the NCR+. Plus. So you know, if you have a choice between Sinovac and AstraZeneca and you are in the NCR plus, you know, maybe you will say, I'm willing to have a little bit less efficacy, but broader protection. Now, other people will say, I want higher protection, narrower, uh, uh, higher efficacy, narrower protection. So you can see it's like buying a car. You have to decide what your priority is, which is why the most important vaccine is the one that is right in front of you. Father, are you satisfied? <laughs> Father, okay, thumbs up from Father Nolan. From uh, Ian Delara, 
if an individual experiences an anaphylactic reaction from a dose of a vaccine brand, can they get a dose from another brand? Thank you, Ian. That's actually a wonderful question. So here in the United States, for example, everyone is aware that Pfizer is more reactogenic than Moderna. Mm -hmm. So if you, if so for some people who are sensitive to allergies, they are told to get Moderna over Pfizer. So it's clear that certain vaccines are more allergic, uh, reactogenic than others. Mm -hmm. So I am not sure about the relative react, uh, allergic, reactogenic profile of Sinovac, AstraZeneca, and very soon Gamalaya. So if you are allergic to one, then you might get, you know, you might, they might send you to the second one. The other possibility too, is they actually will administer the second dose to you, but they will administer it to you in the hospital, which is done here in the United States, knowing, knowing that you have, you have a chance of getting a reaction. Yes. So Father Nick, um, it means to say that uh, we all have to consult our doctor. No? Your In doctor order, is the uh, yeah. person you need to talk to, especially if you have a significant allergies. Yes, yes. Anyway, in the in the survey, uh, in the survey, Father Nick, every time you get vaccinated, there is the question: Are you allergic to this and that? So, from Mary Isabel Hinanay. Father Nick, my father is diabetic and hypertensive. Can he be vaccinated? Thank you, Mary. Yes. So, in fact, your your father is uh, in category A two and or A three, depending upon his age, which he has high priority for vaccination. So, uh, because diabetes and hypertension are not contraindicated by the vaccine. In other words. You, you should be vaccinated. He should be vaccinated, and he should be vaccinated as soon as possible. So there you go, Father. Father Nick. Aside from the questions, of course, there are so many uh, viewers here saying thank you for you. Like for instance, Rosaline San Juan Alzagas Villarena, praying for the success of this vaccine. And however, may I ask if there is a new strand of virus, does this vaccine, uh, can it help us? So thank you so much. I think it's Rosalind, Diba. Her name is Rosalind. Yeah. So thank you, Rosalind. Yeah, we are here in the United States. My students are actually making two versions of the same vaccine, one against the original variant and the second one against the new variant. So we will have, uh, our goal is to have uh, a combination of the two that will protect against both. But like I said, you know, we have to please pray uh, very hard because it all depends if the Lord wants these vaccines or not. Uh, Father Nick, the, the next question from Marifema at Escandor is somewhat uh, similar, but I think this one is regarding the second dose. Uh, the, the other question was, was, if you have Sinovac this year, can you get Astra next year, etc. Ah, I understand, I understand. Yeah. So, but this one, so, would it be okay if the second dose of the vaccine is different from the first dose? At this time, we have no clinical trials of mixing doses. So if you get Sinovac for the first dose, um, the current protocol stipulates that you must take Sinovac for the second dose. Now, there are uh, experiments underway to try to mix some of the doses, but we do not know the results of that. That is a question that the FDA of the Philippines must authorize. Uh, you cannot mix and match doses now within the same two-dose schedule. You can mix and match between years, yeah. but not between doses. Thank you for that clarification, Father. So if you get Sinovac, the first dose, the second dose must be Sinovac. Now from Joan Bunuan, Father. Thank you, Father Nicanor, for a very convincing, informative webinar for all of us. I can make a decision now for my protection and for the good of my family and vulnerable people around me. Salamat po. Keep safe and stay healthy. And of Thank course, you, from, from Hilda, 
Peña Fiel. Prayers assured for your endeavors, Father Nick. Thank you for the information you provided us. Keep safe po and God bless you. From Sheila Almaden, my understanding, vaccines are essential in these times. We are responsible not just to our own body, but of course, to the safety of others. Our judgment would be based on our preferences and values. The vaccine brand consid consideration isn't bad at all. So, so thank you. You know, I, I, I want to say this. It is scary for people to get a vaccine, especially for a vaccine against a new globe, a, a new a respiratory disease that we are still struggling with. It, we, it is okay to be scared, but the challenge here is that we are called to love, you know. And and as and as uh, as uh, Mom Julia, you said, you know, ju love conquers all. And so we must love our neighbors, especially our lolos and lolas enough and our families enough to take the risk uh, because it is a risk to yes. take the risk for our neighbors and for ourselves to protect ourselves and protect each other. So uh, Father, last two questions so that you can also take your rest and do more, uh, do more experiments for your vaccine. No? Uh, from Bea Nicole Palma Savellano, does the vaccine is is the vaccine okay for a person that have glucose six phosphate dehydrogenase? So glucose six phosphate dehydrogenase defect. I'm assuming it's a a congenital inherited disease involving the glycolysis pathway. Um, my my response to you is please speak to your doctor. See the doctor. That is the most important thing of all, Father. You, each of us has unique bodies that God made. And so we, our doctors know our bodies the best. So we need to speak to our doctors so that they can help us to understand uh, the risks that we are taking. Father, for these last questions, actually, I am also interested on, on your response for this. It's uh, most probably it's not just here in the Philippines, but all over the country. How many Filipinos are needed or how many people are needed to be vaccinated to end the pandemic? So the current calculations for herd immunity is about 70% of a population. With the new variants, it will probably increase to something like 80%. So we, for the whole world, to end the pandemic in the whole world, we would have to vaccinate basically 70% or 80% of the 8 billion people on our planet. You can understand why this is the largest vaccination program in the history of the world. Our target is to vaccinate approximately of the 8 billion people are, is about six and a half billion people. Uh, in the Philippines, we must do the same thing. 70 to 80% of our people have to be vaccinated. That means since we are a very young country, half of our Filipinos are 24 years or younger. So what this means is that we will have to vaccinate basically every adult Filipino in our 7,000 plus islands. Now, what, we, you, what you will see is that different regions and different cities will reach herd immunity uh, faster. You know, so, so certain places where there are fewer people and there are fewer COVID cases, they will be vaccinated and then they will reach herd immunity. Our, our immediate target goal, because of the current surge is the uh, NCR plus bubble. So the NCR plus bubble is like the head of the snake of COVID. So in order to kill the snake, we have to cut the head off. So one of the targets probably is to vaccinate the NCR plus um, to, 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 to starve the virus in the Philippines. And then the virus elsewhere in our country will die. Remember, if the virus doesn't get food for two weeks, it will die. And virus food is people. 
which is why a lockdown starves the virus. Because when you have a lockdown and people don't meet each other, then what happens is that the virus starves because it doesn't have new victims. So one possibility is we will vaccinate the NCR plus because the, the, the case load is so heavy. And then we will just say, okay, for the rest of the Philippines, we will wait two weeks and you will now we will go into lockdown in the Philippines for two weeks and we will try to kill the virus there slowly but surely. So there are many possible scenarios that the national government can pick from and we must pray that they choose wisely and they choose with great prudence. So that's it, Father. So the food of the virus is the people. So the people oh, yeah. must stay at home. They must, you, if you go out, you feed the virus. Yeah. So you stay home and starve the virus. So we really have to starve the virus. Father, I promise you, it's the last two questions. But uh, we have here a student who, are, who might be interested for the vaccine. Her question or his question is, what, when are the vaccine for the Filipinos under 18 coming? So, in fact, uh, there are no vaccines approved for 16 years and below anywhere in the world. However, uh, there are clinical trials that are ongoing to test these vaccines in our young people. And once the clinical trials pass, we will approve them. So in the United States, it, it's, we are expecting to begin to vaccinate our young people and our young children probably in July. So mm -hmm. the assumption is that in the Philippines, it will be delayed. It will depend upon which vaccines get approved for children and where we will be able to buy these vaccines. So hearing that, Father, it means to say that the online classes will be prolonged uh, two to three no, years? No, no, no. Actually, my hope when, I, when people ask me is this. I hope that the thing we will do is we will vaccinate all our lolos and lolas. Mm -hmm. We will vaccinate all our teachers. Because you see, our students, even if they get COVID, it's, it's very mild for them. So uh, once our adults are vaccinated, we should probably go start thinking about going back to face-to-face -face education. Mm -hmm. uh, now, it will have to be uh, spaced out. So here in the United States, for example, the entire class is divided into Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So depending upon how tight the classroom, there are students who will come to the class on Monday, but not on Tuesday. So they divide the class into different groups. And so now we can have students going to class with a mask and face shield. They have to be social distanced, but at least they can be in school. At least they can work with each other and with their teachers. Um, and we do not have to worry about the lolos and lolas because if they get sick, if our children get sick, it will be very mild and they will go home and it will, they will, their lolos and lolas and their parents will not get sick from them. So I'm hoping, again, this is all DepEd. The DepEd has to decide this along with the IATF, but there are good, there are, uh, there are many countries around the world who have established best practices for this already. So we can begin to explore, especially once A2 and A3 are vaccinated. So once A2 and A3 are vaccinated, those who are most at risk, then we can think about how can we safely reopen our schools for our young people, because now those who are at risk are protected. That's great news for our students, Father. You know, they I will need... see, huh? This is a death <laughs> end thing. Yeah, but 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 my dear students, you have to protect your lolas and lolos if you really That's want why, them huh? to go back to school. Yeah, re remember, this is to the students. Yeah. We thank you for your sacrifice. Um, it's been a sacrifice of one year, but it, it was done and it is being done for the Lolos and Lolas. Yes, thank you, Father. Uh, Father, actually this person, uh, this priest really wanted you to employ him, no? 
He has another <laughs> question. <laughs> Father, from Father Nolan, what preparation needed before being vaccinated? And if we have maintenance medicine, should we stop taking it before vaccines as preparation before being inoculated? That's a wonderful question. So the first thing I will say, of course, is you must speak to your doctor. But uh, the general advice here in the United States is you maintain your maintenance medicine, but you do not take extra medicine like paracetamol mm -hmm. because a lot of people, they're saying, okay, I'm going to get vaccinated tomorrow. I will take paracetamol today. No. In fact, uh, the CDC here in the United States has advised people just to take their maintenance medicine. No extra uh, drugs that you think will help you to deal with the vaccine. You can take the paracetamol after you're vaccinated. So if you get a temperature, if you have body ache, you have body pain, then you can take the paracetamol, but you cannot take it. You should not take it before the vaccination because we want your immune system to be as awake as possible for the vaccine when the vaccine is given so that it will learn to fight the, the virus as quickly and as effectively as possible. Okay, Father Nolan. Thumbs up, according to Father Nolan. So, uh, Father Nick, this is indeed a very wonderful morning for all our viewers because um, they were enlightened. So, so much input were given and so much sharing were given and we are all enlightened. This gives us a go signal to get, to get away with our worries and finally get vaccinated. As what you have said, we should all be vaccinated not only to protect ourselves, but to protect everyone, especially the elderly and the vulnerable. So a lot of takeaways, take uh, Father Nick, from our viewers and for me also personally. That's why uh, our really great thanks to you. Sabi nga ni Father Nolada, uh, providence given by, sent to us by God. So with that, Father Nick, I know you are, you really have a very tight schedule, although it's already nighttime there. But in spite of that, in spite of your busy schedule, you shared with us your monk's precious time. Our profound thanks for that. So allow me to read, Father, our certificate of appreciation. The Manila Ecclesiastical Province School System Association awards this Certificate of Appreciation and Gratitude to Reverend Father Nicanor Austriaco, OP, PhD, STHD, Biology and Theology Professor, Providence College, Rhode Island, for his most essential and relevant input as excellent resource speaker at the webinar entitled Vaccines and Vaccination from the Perspective of Science, Medicine, and Faith. Given the 17th day of April in the year of our Lord, 2021, signed Reverend Father Albert N. Delvo, PhD, Chairman and President, MAPSA. Everyone, virtual clap for Father Nick. Thank you so much, Father Nick. Thank, Thank you, you so very, much. Very much. It's time for me to play my it's uh, medical. You know, I play my uh, rec I have a tenor recorder. So before I go to bed, you know, it's time for me to play, pray and then play. So thank you so much. Uh, all the way from the United States. I look forward to going home to the Philippines next month. God bless you all. Happy Easter. Mr. Father, thank you so much. Once again, a million thanks to Father Nick, my dear friends. Let us all give Father Nick our virtual clap. This is indeed a very great day for all of us. We are all enlightened on the importance of vaccine to fight COVID. And of course, having heard such an informative and useful information from Father Nick, 
The courage is now in us. Let's all fight COVID. Now, allow me to introduce the Vice Director for Finance of RCBNES, Reverend Father Christopher V. Santos, for our closing prayer. We begin our closing prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We praise and thank you, Lord, for today. We are grateful, Lord, for this morning's enlightening webinar. Thank you for Reverend Father Nick Austriaco for guiding us in understanding the importance of vaccine and vaccination. Continue to use people as your instrument of healing and to discover cures for this disease. We thank you for the vaccines developed, made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We ask you, Lord, to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death. Restore our hope and strengthen our faith. As we continue to journey in these trying times, our hope will never waver. Our faith remains steadfast and our love will be our saving grace. We ask this prayer in your mighty name and our source of strength, our true healer, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, with and may you. Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, Father Chris. Ooh. So there we are, friends. Let us all be safe. Thank you so much, everyone, for making all these things possible. Thank you, Reverend Father Albert N. Delbo, PhD, for uh, having this kind of event for all of us. And of course, thank you to MAPSA Technical Support and RCB NES uh, Technical Support. God bless us all and let us all stay at home, be safe, and get vaccinated. Good afternoon, everyone.